Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Coming to you today to talk to you about the spot market and what I know and what I see. So I just want to explain a few things right off the bat. I've been trucking for 16 years now. So I've been through a few ups. I've been through a few downs out here. And I just want to put some clarity in the market from what I see and my thoughts and my opinions. Now, I'm not the end-all, be-all by all means. Uh, this is just one trucker's opinion. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Um, and... You know, this is March 2022. I want to make that clear. We're like toward the end of March. This is the final week of March uh, 2022. So if you're watching this in the future, uh, I don't know how useful this information will be. There'll be some timeless stuff in here, of course. You know, I, I try to make things, you know, I, I put some knowledge in there that's useful no matter what. But I will be talking specifically about the market we are in right now and just giving you an idea of what I think. So. A little bit more about me. I've been an owner-operator for like 12 years now. I did three years company. Uh, owner-operator, went back, did like another year company. Uh, tried to get me like a like a local, you know, home more type thing. And to me, it just wasn't for me. So back to being an owner-operator it was. And that's kind of where I'm at. Now, I do pull a refrigerated trailer. I do run spot market freight. Normally on the way back, normally my outbounds. Uh, our, you know, company, I'm leased onto a carrier, so they're like company connections, you know, I use to get out, and then typically have to use the spot market to get back to Minnesota. Sometimes I have to use the spot market to get out of Minnesota, just depends on what's available, what the market's looking like, and uh, so I keep track of the spot market in most major cities. Uh, areas I run a lot is Minnesota to Texas, Minnesota to Louisiana, I kind of consider that one in the same because I run to more like East Texas than to West Texas. So Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, maybe even up into Massachusetts. I kind of consider that one lane, Georgia, another lane, Texas, another lane. And then I got my shorter lanes. I run when I, you know, just need to go out and back like Kansas city, Chicago, St. Louis, um, you know, Milwaukee. Those are kind of my shorter runs. I do so I keep track of a lot of different areas. Now out west, I don't run out west a lot. Uh, I haven't been to California in two years now, so it's just something I get to when I get to. And if I don't, I'm not that worried about it. So with that being said, let's talk about the current state of freight on the spot market. Uh, I seen Freight Waves had an article out the other day. Uh, a bloodbath is coming, I think the article said. I did a Trucker News, I mentioned that article in the Trucker News I did a few days ago. If you want to go watch that, go back and look for Trucker News just a couple days ago. I talked more about that. So in that article, Freight Waves did give a lot of data. It wasn't just scaring people to come, you know, click on a video so they get the ad revenue. They did give a lot of stats. There was a lot of uh, data in that video. And I do think, you know, they're, they're not just scare tacticking. Because if you look at the freight market right now, here is, I give you I give you the short view of it right now, the, the quick synopsis. Here's the reader's digest of the freight market right now, the spot market. Uh, freight rates are going down because volumes are going down. And I want to speak on that a little bit of why that's happening or why I think that's happening and what the data suggests from freight waves that I've looked at. And fuel's going up. So if you're an owner operator or a carrier, you're getting squeezed a little bit right now. You know, we're getting we're getting double hand gripped, you know what I mean? They're getting a good they're getting a good grip on us because it's hitting us from both sides. So and that is one reason when even when fuel prices were two dollars a gallon, I was still pushing for better fuel mileage. In my opinion, as an owner operator, that's like the number one thing uh, that you can control is your fuel cost as far as how many miles per gallon you get. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of specking a truck for the job. And, you know, like you wouldn't want to pull a JB Hunt 360 box with, uh, with a heavy haul truck, you know, like kind of get the right truck for the right job type thing. Um, so the fuel price is one thing, you know, and I always say, you know, mud flap code in the description. If you don't know what mud flap is, I guarantee you it's worth a look. Right now, it's worth a look. It's beating both of my EFS cards and my comm data cards. So I'm feeling like 90% on mud flap right now. 
But as far as the, the market goes and the things of hauling freight and that goes, here's what's uh, happening. You know, I say we're getting squeezed right now. Um, the spot market is 100% supply and demand. When they need a truck and there's no trucks available, the price has to go up. When a broker needs to position a load and put it out there and there's 10 trucks for that one load, they can work their angles. Now, some of those angles I consider to be a little shady. If I was a broker, I don't know if I would feel good doing it, but that's the thing of, um, you know, they, they put the fish on the stringer, I like to say. they call You call in, you say, hey, I want this load, let's just say Chicago to Nashville. Uh, I'm just going to use round numbers. Let's say they give, they give you $2,000 on that load. Now, that's not what the market's paying right now. I'm just saying that's that's just a number I'm putting out there before everybody has to get in the comments and go, oh, what are you talking about? Chicago to Nashville, $2,000, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot, but for other reasons. So uh, let's say they give you $2,000, okay? But then they take forever to send you the rate con and this and that, and they're jacking you around. I like to say you're on the stringer. Now, for you guys that don't know, fishing on the stringer means you've caught a fish you put it on the stringer, you know, that's, uh, you put him back in the water, but he can't get away. You got him on a rope, basically. So that's what the broker's doing to you. They put you on a rope. They got a fish. Now, the thing of it is, if they were to catch a better fish, and say the limit's one fish, if they catch a better fish, they can let that other one go, because he's still in the water. He's just on a rope. And then they got a better one. So, say, they got it posted for 2000 You call in, they tell you, hey, you got that load for $2,000. Who says they take it off the load board? The thing ain't got to move till tomorrow. Maybe they take a few more phone calls. Maybe maybe somebody calls in and says, hey, I could do that for $1,800. Well, the broker's going to call you and say, uh, hey, uh, they canceled that load. Sorry about that, you know, and all. Uh, and they're going to get the guy to do it for $1,800. Now, is that the right thing to do? I probably wouldn't do it if I was a broker. I say probably. It depends on how tough times are for me. But I think... I wouldn't want to do that because to me that's a little bit wrong you know when you make a deal with somebody you stick to it in my opinion but i get it why they do it you know they're in it to make money and uh that's what they're here for that's what they're doing so uh a lot of that's going on right now so that you know that's a lot of why you're getting a lot of canceled loads a lot of uh you know you sit there and wait for two hours with no rate con you know stuff like that so that lets you know that um you know they don't need the capacity as much as they did earlier. And reason on that is the the capacity, or not the capacity, but the uh, the amount of loads being shipped has went down. Volumes are down. You look at any load board, tendered freight, it's all showing going down right now. And the reason for that is I think a lot of these big manufacturers, uh, they were in a just-in-time warehousing situation, and they got caught with their pants down when, uh, you know, everything happened in 2020. And I think uh, they decided, hey, we need to move some freight into some warehouses because we're having, you know, shipping problems, getting things overseas. We're having, you know, getting them in from overseas and shipping things out. We're having trouble with uh, the ports. And so I think what happened was uh, they needed stuff moved, and then, they decided to pay the rates and they got it moved so they weren't be you know caught with their pants down again and now i think they kind of expected you know uh the thing that happened in 2020 to come back because you know the news and you know all the world health people you know they love hyping that up because that gets you know that makes them feel important and i think when it didn't come back like they thought it would uh, a lot of this stuff just gonna sit in the warehouse right now and you know, the government's not giving out free money every other month now, you know, to the tune of thousands of dollars a year. Uh, they kind of reeled that in a little bit, and that's hurting the economy as far as, you know, like, uh, you just don't have as much expendable income, and then gas prices go up. That lags on the freight market, you know. Every time gas prices go way up, I, you can see it in the trucking industry. If you take every family spending, you know, twenty to thirty dollars more a week on gas, that's twenty to thirty dollars they're not spending on groceries. That's twenty to thirty dollars they're not, you know, paying on their credit cards. That's twenty to thirty dollars they're, you know, not doing things into the economy. They're just putting it in their gas tank and burning it into the air. So that is a problem, uh, short term. Now. 
let's look at why and how I think about the freight market and the best advice I can give you is number one, uh, you know, always work on, on what you can control, you know, your debt, your fuel economy, things like that. Try to, try to, you know, do as much as you can with that. That's my advice. I mean, it's pretty generic advice. I think most people would tell you that. The thing about the freight market and advice I can give you on that is the fact that I've been through these ups and downs and, you know, like it's just the way trucking is. Now, the only thing I can tell you is guaranteed about trucking is it will be different in a month than it is now. And I ain't telling you whether it's going to be up or down, but it'll be different. Things in trucking just don't stay the same. You know, when rates go hot, everybody wants to run out and buy a truck, whether they know anything about trucking or not. You know, you, you hear about all these people, you know, in the past six months of buying trucks and they don't know nothing about the trucking industry. All they know is, uh, you know, they watch a Cash is King video and he's killing it on the weekly recaps. But the fact of the matter is, is I have a lot of experience and I run this business because it is my business. I'm involved with it to the 10th degree. I drive the truck. I own the truck. I, you know, pick the freight. I, oh, I mean, I'm so involved with it. That's why I make a little bit more than the people that have no idea about trucking. They just say, hey, I'm going to, I got, I got $50,000. Let me go buy a truck and hire a driver. And let me tell you, that's luck of the draw. You're going to get a good driver. And that makes or breaks your trucking business right there. To me, I think before you take that $50,000 and buy a truck, if you don't know a damn thing about trucking, and number one, if you're going to buy a truck, have a CDL. Why, why would you not be able to go recover your own truck? That just blows my mind. But anyway, that, that's a whole other video. But my thing is, if you're going to take that $50,000 and put it into trucking and you don't know a damn thing about trucking, I say take her to the casino and let her ride on something that's like, you know, pick something that's like a, you know, three to one odds. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe go to the roulette table and pick red or black, even or odd. You know, because that's about what you're doing when you're when you're gambling with your money and you're getting into trucking and you don't know anything about it. Because it's all about the driver you hire. You could think you got a winner of a driver on your hands and they could destroy your equipment, your name, your reputation, uh, possibly cost you everything you've ever worked for in, in, the, in, in, in the first mile of driving. You know what I mean? hit a school bus full of nuns as they say and it's all over from there for you so keep in mind um everybody's jumped into trucking and that's why we have all this capacity so things even and out should weed out a few of those people that aren't really they don't want to be in trucking they just want it because of the money those people will be the first to go that'll help capacity a little bit but as far as you know the ups and downs of it the reason i say I, I can tell you it's going to be different, but I can't tell you whether it'll be up or down. It's because no one can. You can look at all these predictions and all this and all that, and things that affect trucking are typically the things outside of trucking. You know, it's like uh, in 2020, you know, like what, what a year. We went from like the worst, uh, you know, spring ever to like a really good fall and winter time, uh, you know, in trucking as far as rates and everything uh, you know and then equipment prices caught on fire and the, when the rates went up and then you know the rest is uh, history we all know what's going on with equipment prices right now that's another thing i think is going to weed uh some of these new entries out is buying equipment right now they're buying at the the highest of you know record highs i'm not saying it's a bad deal good deal i'm not there to tell you how how that's going to go but i will tell you i know it's a fact they're buying at the highest of the high we've ever seen right now uh, and only time will tell if that's a good idea or not. So, uh, hopefully capacity will even out with supply of freight. And that, that's probably going to mean short term, you know, a few people are going to get squeezed really, really hard. Like, you know, if you've got a $3,000 truck payment or a $4,000 truck payment, probably means you got a pretty expensive truck. So you probably got a high insurance bill to go with it. And uh, hopefully that truck gets really good fuel economy because at five, six dollars a gallon, you're going to get squeezed on that pretty hard too. And then freight, you know, being scarce. It's like rates are down a little bit, but it's also the volume of freight that's hurting right now because, you know, I'm in, uh, I'm in a pretty, you know, nice Midwest town, you know, St. Louis. 
and I'm looking at freight back to Minnesota out of here, and they ain't a whole lot to pick from. You know, normally there was probably, you know, on a given day, there would probably be 20 loads back to Minnesota from here, and they'd be paying like, you know, 24, 2500. And then I'm looking at it today, and there's like four or five that are, you know, unique postings. Like some of them are posted twice, but, uh, you know, there's probably like five unique postings, and they're averaging about 1600 a go. And, you know, those, the problem is a lot of those guys that uh, have high debt and horrible fuel economy, they're going to have to run miles right now just to pay the overhead. And they're going to have to run a lot because they're not making a lot of profit because it's a double edged sword because the fuel economy is getting them. So, the thing with freight, my advice on it is look at it like this. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. For the guys that's been in it in a year and a half uh, or less, you've only known a really, really cherry market, you know, and this is going to be your first taste of a down market because it seems like this isn't just a blimp, you know, like it, and now, again, I'll, I'll tell you the final thing of it. But, you know, this has been going on for about a month now. Volume's coming down, fuel prices going up. So, um, you know, most guys don't even know the feel of a down week, much less a down month. So when it starts, you know, if it continues on the rate it's going, and I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying if it does continue on that, a lot of guys are going to get squeezed out really quick. So it's just the way it is. But here's the thing about freight. I can't tell you if it's going to go up. I can't tell you if it's going to go down. I can tell you it's going to do one or the other. And I can't tell you if it does go up, I can't tell how you can't tell you how long that trend's going to last. And if it's going to go down, I can't tell you how long that trend's going to last. Even looking at all the data and everything cuz there's always factors that can't be foreseen. You know, it's like the new normal is the unnormal it seems like. So that's that's how I look at it when it's up, it's up and when it's down, I it's just down. Like the, the thing you got to worry about is how long is it going to stay down or how long is it going to stay up? You know, I got a, I got a tattoo that says, uh, you know, when you're, when you're up, you feel like you're never going to come down. And when you're down, you feel like you're never going to come up, but you always do. And, um, that's just how I look at it. You know, it, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. And, you know, when, when we were at the highs, everybody was, you know, it's never going to end, you know, and I do think we're kind of in a new normal, you know, I, I I'm going to have a hard time seeing like, like, let's look at dry van freight, you know, I'm going to have a hard time seeing dry van freight go back to a buck 50 a mile average. Could it? Of course it can, but boy, that's going to make some people fall and drop like flies at that rate because of equipment. You can't replace equipment. And when you're down, it seems like you're down for two weeks now. You know, what used to be a three-day job because of the labor shortage, I think, in a lot of these shops is when you're, you know, it's like there there is no two-day job. It's like two days just to get your truck into the shop to get it diagnosed now. So if we go back to a dollar fifty, you know, you got to look. Some guys, you know, if you're getting, if you're getting five, six miles per gallon average right now, you are paying like a dollar a mile to run a truck. Now, there's no way you can run a truck for a buck fifty a mile. So I think, you know, I think we're going to establish some new normals here. Now, what they are, I don't know. And how long they last, I don't know. See, these are the things you don't know about in trucking, the unknowns. But just keep that in mind, guys. You never know. You know, like people are going to come on here and say, uh, oh, you know, freight's going to do this and freight's going to do that. And, you know, I, I, I fall into that a little bit, you know, but at the same time, nobody really knows. We can look at all the data. We can look at this. We can look at that, but you really never know which way the rates are going to go. I'm trying to make this video just to explain what I've seen in the last month and, you know, just try to tell everybody, you know, work, work on, work on what you can because, you know, you never know what's coming and that's the best advice I can give you, I guess. Um, if you've made it this far, be sure to hit the like button. I think that's it for the video, guys. And click on one of these other videos if you want to continue watching some Cash is King video. Come join me for a live show. Click all those links in the description. Money saving links down there for my for my self-employed people. Um, and if you don't use Mudflap, you should. And if you work for someone, tell them to uh, check out my videos on Mudflap. Maybe they should start feeling on Mudflap too. Could 
could help the profit margin a little bit. Until later, guys, take care of each other.